Hello everyone and welcome to yet another Coding in Seal. It's Friday today, I hope you had a lovely week, you're having a lovely Friday. It's gonna get even better, have an exciting stream today or an ambitious stream. I should say, have the agenda on the right and we can cover it. But first of all, hope you're having a lovely day, I'll say once again. Get yourselves heard in the chat, let me know how you're doing, what you're working on, what's puzzling you, what you'd like me to talk about, because there is an agenda, there are things that I won't talk about, but I'm always up for answering questions. What I really want is to answer questions really that you are having, not make up problems and uh, then gener uh, generate some solutions, which is the premise of today. So in the last stream, we created a dynamic social preview component in Svelteket in order to have nice thumbnails you can share on socials like Discord or WhatsApp or wherever, and then get a nice thumbnail, very professional looking thumbnail that will get people to click with dynamic elements like the amount of uh, hearts. So you're sharing a blog post, you can also share that it has 250 likes. And then a few hours later, you can, or someone else shares the same blog post and it has a 255 hearts uh, dynamically updated or the last update or whoever did it, we've went through a few reasons of why that would be useful. Most of the time for your app, you would just uh, be just fine with a static thumbnail image, social preview image that a designer has created or you have created in Figma or wherever else. But sometimes having that dynamic element is important and we did it with Svelteket, but we weren't able to deploy it to Vercel in the end because Vercel deploys serverless uh, lambdas, serverless functions that have a limit and uh, the limit is 50 megabytes. And in the end, after some advice from the stream as well and some work afterwards, I managed to get that uh, uh, endpoint to 52 megabytes, uh, megabytes or something. I'd share, I'll share my screen for just a moment. So we got to 5251 for all the tech that uh, we needed to have an automated browser go to the page that were dynamically generated uh, as vanilla HTML in the end, take a screenshot and then stream that back into an image by using Puppeteer and a very AWS friendly, serverless friendly version of uh, Chromium. We were able to go to 5251, but the limit is still 50 megabytes. So I wasn't able to deploy our work from uh, last stream, sadly, but that got me thinking Maybe one day this will magically go under the limit. Maybe the Chromium packets will be even slimmer, or maybe there is an optimization I can do with uh, this Velkit repo that I have to set a few extra megabytes or something. So maybe in the future this will just work. But what if there was a proper service, like a, somewhere in a server that's always on, not a serverless uh, server that uh, has that small limit. Maybe there is a service that runs there that's you know gigabytes large or as large as uh, it needs to be. And that's the thing that runs Puppeteer. So that's what we'll be attempting to do today. That's my idea. I don't know what uh, you think about it. And uh, I do have a few guesses of what we'll go with, but I'm always up for uh, suggestions. So we'll be building a service. It's definitely gonna be TypeScript. Well, I say definitely, but uh, I did consider vanilla JavaScript because that may be a bit easier to just deploy instead of uh, having something like this node compile the JavaScript or uh, uh, runtime compile it. I don't really know, but probably a TypeScript uh, service that is gonna be probably routing using Fastify or Express or Coa or something. Let me know if you want uh, us to use a different library. There's also Nest.js that is like a huge framework that is uh, picking up traction that I haven't really tried out and I'm excited to try out things in uh, the stream. But if you were, to tell me if there are no suggestions, I will go with Fastify. And in the end, we need to deploy that somewhere that's not serverless. So I was thinking Google App Engine for this. There are also a lot of AWS services, AWS things we can uh, deploy this thing to. There is render.com that's been getting some uh, heap search stack uh, love as well. But uh, again, with no further pressure, I think I would go with uh, Google App Engine in the end, which is why I've named this uh, stream Puppeteer and Google App Engine. But titles can change and thumbnails can change, so if uh, you convince me, we can try out something else, something more fun. Uh, seeing the previous stream, 
of course, go for it. We were doing very different things, I'd say. We learned uh, quite a few things about the uh, Svelkit and endpoints and uh, all of that, that we won't really replicate today. This is going to be a standalone service that will probably be running Puppeteer and uh, that's about it. But this can even expand to its own thing, like a subscription service, like an API that uh, anyone can hit and say, take a screenshot of this URL. I did try to search if there are services like this, and there are some, but most of them oversell. They do more things than that. You are supposed to use them to take a snapshot of your whole app and then uh, check if there are any differences, if something's broken after a deploy or something. All I really want is <laughs> to take uh, a screenshot of uh, a dedicated route that should be tasked for social previews. So maybe there is space for an, an app like that. I don't really know. It could be something that we expand upon and create like a SaaS uh, type of uh, product for the stream next week, which is another thing that uh, I wanted to talk about and uh, highlight that uh, next week, next Friday, the 21st, a day after my birthday, we'll be doing a marathon stream, a much longer stream than uh, today. I don't know how long we're gonna go, but uh, it's gonna be long. And uh, we'll, bring, we'll be building a brand new app with uh, Svelkit as uh, it seems to be the, the thing that people want, but I still don't know what type of app we'll be building. We may be building a SaaS style app that, you know, the screenshots as a service thing, sign up, you have this quota. If you have an API key, you exhaust your quota. There are tons of fun things to do in that space. A lot of uh, interest is in an e-commerce app that's uh, definitely having real world implications as well. I know lots of people do e-commerce sites nowadays. Still, that's how I got started like 20 years ago, but it still keeps going. I don't know if people just do it with like Shopify or something like that, or if they just go to Etsy to, sell, uh, to uh, do their products uh, there. But in any case, there is interest in that. So that's also a very likely outcome. But there are all other ideas being floated around. Float your idea, go in the Discord, there are links that you can click to join so that community or comment in any video really and uh, or now in the chat and let me know what you'd like to see. All right, so uh, let's uh, have a look. Screenshot app, I've explained how we couldn't uh, deploy our solution to serverless Vercel and I couldn't really find anything that does the thing that I want. I have this component that's supposed to be an image, but I don't want it to be exactly an image, I want it to be an HTML, so I can use something like Svelte to more easily create some fantastic, some nice looking UI with it. It's very hard to work with images on the back end. I find I'm definitely more comfortable using frameworks like Svelte or React or whatever else. So I want HTML to become an image. And the way I think I can do it is by taking a screenshot with a tool called Puppeteer or Playwright that run browsers according to the instructions you give them on the command line, take the screenshot, stream that uh, as uh, the image and problem solved. Nothing like that seems to exist or there is uh, space for something like that. But, uh, and uh, that's what we'll try to build today and deploy it to something like Google App Engine, something that can handle bigger uh, services, deploying bigger handlers and uh, endpoints. And uh, I think that ticks off a couple agenda items with one fell uh, zoop. So we may just jump in to doing some uh, JavaScript uh, TypeScript setting up a brand new TypeScript app, which I haven't done in uh, quite a long time. I am known for doing mostly front-end, but uh, I did do only back-end at uh, some point, only PHP and uh, that sort of thing back in the day, believe it or not. So I may be rusty with doing back-end stuff, but I know how to do back-end stuff. We'll uh, prove it today. So this uh, would be fun, like the front-end dev. <laughs> Nowadays, front end dev struggles with the uh, backend. Should be fun. Hello, Gokify Media. Nice to see you once again in a stream. It's always fun to code with company. But I think without further ado, we'll start coding things. And if my memory serves, we will want to create a new directory. And uh, I've been thinking 
of BrowserSot as the name of uh, this uh, service. I don't know what uh, you think. And just in case we do something different, like a front end at some point, we have a web version or a you know the native app version at some point. I want to namespace it with uh, Das API. A way to solve our problem as well uh, would have been to make our Svelte app be served with the node adapter. So instead of uh, the serverless thing, deployed to Vercel, deployed this deployed to any service, including Google App Engine, by deploying a huge node server, which would solve the problem just fine. It's an option for the future. But first, I want to see how it is to deploy to Google App Engine or similar nowadays. How is it to deploy a huge node server? And I know that lots of people are keen to take advantage of Svelte features like deploying on the edge and that sort of thing. The serverless stuff are good and are popular for a reason. So I wouldn't want to default back in the solution to be just use adapter node. So that's why we're trying to do this. So let's create this directory. And uh, I'd be hoping that uh, npm init just starts scaffolding an app for us. Screenshots as a service is a great acronym as well, I'm uh, realizing. SAS. Everybody wants to do SAS. Entry point knows where it's going to be. Well, probably it's going to be this. Git repository will create this at some point. I guess might as well create it now. That's it. Everything open source. If you, <laughs> even if we charge for this, you're always uh, welcome to copy the code and fork it and uh, build your own thing and just use it. The MIT license. Uh, uh, nah, just I'll add this afterwards. I want to not initialize the repository so I can do stuff in the code and push that up. So these look like nice options, but we'll add them afterwards. Ah, and also very important. Let me start my noodle timer, my focus timer, 25 minute Pomodoro style focus timer. Please do interrupt me and help me when I get uh, stuck or not, just uh, chat with me. But uh, having the dedicated break does uh, help uh, my mind clear and uh, helps me go longer for uh, these uh, streams. So, all right, all of this we did to create our link. Here it is. Keywords doesn't matter. Hey, that's me. Is that how you do the names and emails with uh, Git? Don't really know. Looks about right. And uh, we don't have anything installed. I know that it's essential for me to have prettier. So let's add uh, that. I know we'll have TypeScript. And I know we'll use this node. So now we can open our code window. That's the emptiest project I've seen in quite a while. And uh, I guess nah, we won't do it yet. Uh, we just want a Hello World uh, server to start with, I'd say. And uh, how we do that with this node, I think we just point this node to like a script like this, but we'd need a tsconfig, of course. 
Uh, how do we initialize a TS config? Is there like a TSC init type of command? Ha! Still got it. Sure. Looks about right. And uh, what we want is to create a source directory which will have an index.ps. Maybe a park at station will have a start script which will be run in TS node source index TS. And uh, we could also be building this into a different directory, like a this directory, and not use TS node and use just node. But uh, we'll see. There is uh, also a flag we may want this node to not do the static uh, type in the type in check while it's running the server because that's going to be slower. But if that's the case, we should have like a build or lint step or something. Not sure. We'll uh, see. But in this file. We want our uh, hello word. Our old tradition. So if I npm start now, it works. Amazing. Uh, what else do I like? I like like auto formatting for now, but uh, maybe linting. But I don't think I'll be setting these uh, things uh, live on uh, stream. Just a simple readme. GitHub Copilot always cracks me up. So this should be enough to have an initial commit. Ignore, we forgot. Clearly. <laughs> yeah, so let's open uh, TechiCat just uh, for a moment. Can't go far without a uh, nice Git Ignore. And uh, we may be ignoring more things than we need to ignore. But that's fine. So, you know, SvelteKit wouldn't be ignoring build. Would we be ignoring that? This one I like uh, ignoring the git ignore global, for example. Totem files, should we ignore them? Controversial. Uh, playwright files, probably not this. Cypress and all that. Nope. Not for sale. Probably not these either. But hey. Yeah, don't mention yarn if we're not using it. Uh, sure, so the important one is uh, ignore not modules here so we don't commit all of this, which should be installed. And... Uh, Project Scaffold. Uh, 
And now, I can actually push all of this to GitHub and get that out of the way. And while this happens, let's say that we maybe started this around the 20 minute mark, 15 minute mark. We'll be doing this here. All right, so much like we did on uh, the other app, in the Svelte Git app, we had this handler. Once again, we couldn't deploy this because it was too big, 52 megabytes, which isn't that big, but over the limit of uh, 50, we'll want to run this in our uh, node, uh, TS node app, like all the anything, the only thing that we'll be doing it is this, but we may want to do some routing just uh, in case we extend the API with other things. Well, we want to get some parameters, I suppose. So yeah, quite a lot of the parameters actually, the page that uh, this app will be going to will be gotten from uh, search params or even body params, we'll see. But uh, that's why it won't just be running a puppeteer, but it uh, will be running puppeteer. So let's bring that in. And maybe we can run it without bringing in the lightweight puppeteer as well, since it will be a big service. We'll see. You're supposed to use this with Puppeteer Core, but I found that that uh, didn't uh, quite work, sadly. Uh, with the latest versions of Puppeteers, with earlier versions of Puppeteers, this lightweight Chromium packets and other versions of these packets didn't work. But that's by the by. We've brought in Puppeteer, so all we want to do in uh, our file Uh, I don't know how to organize this. Instead of hello world, let's say spell. As research for this, I didn't do much, but I did explore Dino, uh, not Node, Dino, uh, to see if it would make sense to play around with uh, that and uh, get like top level of weight and uh, all of those things, which maybe TypeScript latest actually does have. So who knows? Let's uh, copy all of this. Put it right in here. Don't want this. Don't want this. Don't want this. And potentially we don't want this in a handler just yet. Top level await, we don't like it, but can change the module, the module op option, I suppose, to not 16. Oof, <laughs> TypeScript in it, like that really adds quite a few things there. Interesting. Uh, target. Not happy. Ugh, should we say that this is like MTS? That's uh, quite interesting. How do I specify that this module? In module. I know that it's MGS for uh, JavaScript files. Uh, but uh, with TypeScript, what are they doing? I haven't encountered this before. I just need to export like nothing. Let's live Google this. MZS, but that's not quite what I want.
top level weight TypeScript. It's not that important. We can wrap it in uh, like a method as well. How many ages ago did I read this? They say module is next, which is not what uh, our uh, linter uh, told us. So there must be like a another trick here. There must be something in this file that we can do to specify that it's a module, but it doesn't really matter. That's not what we're here for today. So let's just say handler. Let's create a method. Create an async method. Slide all of this up. Uh, don't want this. Don't want this. The image URL. Uh, let's just uh, make a screenshot of example.com for now. And uh, response is not a thing, so let's console log. The image buffer for now. <laughs> and uh, we can make this an HTTP server shortly. See if this still runs. Puppeteer does take a while. So this isn't proof that uh, we've messed it up. But if this stays for uh, a few moments, then yes. Ah, it took something, uh, which is uh, pretty good. I choose to believe uh, this is uh, the correct thing. But I guess if I specify not headless mode, will we see Puppeteer like running around? It's going there. Ah, and uh, we should probably be closing this. Sir, it's also promise, so we can await it. Right again. This runs, closes, and then the program finishes as well. This is quite good. I'm confident that uh, this is an actual screen, like a screenshot of uh, what we did want to take a screenshot of. Uh, I'm trying to think in the service as well GitHub we have. Am I still sipping this? PNC. I do have the Techie Cat project open, so I can double check quickly. Meta. Should be. Ah, not slash PNC. Yes. 
this. Right, so we can try to take a screenshot of uh, this with uh, card count 52. So this we did deploy. We didn't deploy the service that uh, turns this into an image. This is HTML. So it can take dynamic parameters, as you can see. Uh, not let your social previews, say, create eye cuts and social previews. Always thinking of the marketing. Uh, right. Uh, why did I do all of this? I did all of this so we can go and say to this page for now. We will be capturing this dynamically somehow. And we have proven that uh, it seemingly takes a screenshot. This is a buffer of something, so might as well be an image. But to better confirm this works, uh, we can set up a router. So thing we did this we did this and uh, we can discuss uh, router options let me know in the comments if you really want me to use like uh, express or uh, something else more exciting I think I'll be going with uh, fastify because it has fast in the name if it was you know slowify I wouldn't use it but uh, fastify that's what you want you want to go fast uh, there is this website that uh, I've been following over the years uh, I guess it's a group, Tech Empower Consultancy Group, or uh, whoever they are. They seem great, and they make these very exciting uh, benchmarks uh, that are also community supported, I suppose. They surely don't have people running uh, the same uh, benchmarks, creating all these simple apps in every language in the world. I'm sure it's uh, community supported as well. But they make blog posts about the uh, results that they find and all, the, uh, all these benchmarks are about how fast, how many requests can various frameworks uh, handle uh, for the same uh, type of uh, ta task. And uh, I've always found those uh, fun, especially when I, w I want to try out a different language. So back in the day, I was doing like PHP, so it would be cool to try to see the benchmarks, which of the frameworks uh, would be uh, performant enough. So Laravel versus something else, uh, PHP Cake, something like that. I don't remember what uh, it was. Or Lumen, which was like a lightweight uh, version of uh, Laravel. But most uh, fun would be to uh, look into languages that uh, I do know, but don't really code in, or that I'm excited about and don't know much uh, about. So even, you know, Java or uh, Elixir, Go, that, that's definitely something that uh, I was uh, looking at. Python, whatever you want, you can put in there and see frameworks in other languages. And uh, you'd see how some would be more performant than others. I'm always surprised when uh, somehow JavaScript is uh, top on these. There have been some developments in PHP as well, some crazy PHP frameworks that uh, uh, are quite, quite uh, performant. Uh, Rust wasn't a thing back in the day when uh, I was uh, first uh, trying out uh, this. But in any case, I would uh, check out these uh, benchmarks according to the demo app or whatever app uh, I would uh, want to build and then start investigating these uh, libraries according to their performance. And most of the time, they would be too close to the metal. They would be too low level uh, for me. Uh, I'd go to their docs, maybe there wouldn't be any docs, or maybe it would be too much work for the code to be pleasant. So for a demo app, maybe readable, for something more unusable, uh, I would say, or unusable by me, who would be an amateur in uh, that uh, language. So I would go through the list to find one that uh, I could grok, that I could uh, understand well enough and try to build uh, an app uh, with. Uh, why am I saying all of this for uh, Tech Empower and uh, all of that? Ah, yeah, for the <laughs> Fastify stuff. I think Fastify does perform quite well 
uh, on this as it happens. I think it's gotten some traction. I've worked with companies that are using uh, uh, Fastify as well, so it's not just hipster stack uh, solution. It's a legit uh, solution. Express, I do believe, I'm certain it has the most code, most uh, JavaScript backends are using Express surely, but I'm trying to think if I was a new company or a new startup, like would most of them go with Express? That'd be my guess, but I don't know. I don't have the data for that. So don't uh, uh, hold me to this. Uh, sometimes going with try the true solution is a good idea. Express as well keeps improving, keeps releasing new versions as well. It's not like it's stale and uh, there forever, but the Fastify seems to be growing at a very good pace still dependable, still used by uh, many companies, and seems to be faster with a lot of use cases and has a better API, I'd say. But, hey. And uh, yeah, so Fastify, I think that's uh, what uh, we'll be going for to start with which uh, again, I've uh, used in uh, companies uh, as well and maybe make like the little demos, but uh, that's it. My only worrying thing is that it's not uh, written in uh, TypeScript. They do support TypeScript by them typing the type definitions, but that is never as good as having the library itself be written in TypeScript because sometimes TypeScript will figure stuff out that uh, no human can understand, especially when it comes to generics and uh, that sort of thing. So typing it after the fact will never be as good. But I do know that uh, some people <laughs> uh, like vanilla JavaScript, if you can call vanilla JavaScript uh, the one with like uh, annotations and uh, comments and uh, all of those things. Uh, shots fired? <laughs> I don't think so. But uh, anyway, I, I do like uh, the static typing for sure in any language, even in PHP at uh, the end of my times with it, of me seriously coding in it. I started using the typed features uh, there and uh, I guess I haven't really worked with uh, like a statically typed, you have to static type everything language uh, by default uh, in uh, many projects. But still, I do think TypeScript and the soft uh, typing uh, it uh, does by allowing JavaScript and any and uh, all of that to be much better than just doing vanilla JavaScript. Because the biggest thing uh, about uh, building apps is not their performance in the benchmarks. The biggest thing is being able to roll with the punches. So when the product manager says, we're pivoting, we want this to do this other thing that I told you three months ago, we'll never do it. Uh, now we want to do it. How can you refactor the code base? How, how can you account for these things? And uh, the answer is that with TypeScript, it's easier. So it's saving me time there. It's giving my ID superpowers and it's saving me time when inevitably things uh, change. That's why I want to use it. And still, like maybe flexible enough than uh, some of the languages that are like super strongly, strictly typed, maybe more pleasant to use. Uh, anyway, I uh, will take the little uh, noodle break before we get into Fastify. Uh, hello, Brian, as well. I'm uh, good words, kind words uh, about uh, this stream. I'm uh, glad you're finding it exciting. And uh, you've been dealing, deploying a PDF generator uh, no, with Node and Puppeteer, which is uh, great. Uh, that's uh, another solution. Or uh, another problem that I was thinking that this hammer can solve <laughs> uh, using something and then puppeteer to capture this as an image or PDF or something like that. I think I've used something different for specifically PDF creation, but uh, I don't quite remember now. So sorry for uh, that. I'll try to investigate uh, afterwards and uh, see if something comes to memory. And if so, I will mention in the other stream or always even reach out and uh, uh, will uh, reply. Uh, and uh, good experience with App Engine and uh, Railway. Railway sounds like uh, a Google font that uh, I've used, uh, but uh, not uh, something else. Uh, Railway JS? Ooh, interesting. It's one of those. Is it, 
like Terraform for beginners, which is what I would need. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, but uh, integrates with GitHub, which is uh, cool. It kind of reminds me of uh, this, I think. It is uh, another uh, connect to your GitHub and deploy any type of application uh, as well. I will definitely be giving it a, a look, to be sure. Let me paste that in my private notes <laughs> to remember to have a look afterwards. Uh, but we'll see. We'll, we'll uh, come to that at the moment. And uh, you're also recommending uh, Google uh, App Engine as well. That's uh, I was using with uh, PHP in uh, a big company like 10 years ago. I don't even remember how long it was. And it was at the moment where they had almost no support for PHP. So we had to write like custom adapters to deploy our thing there. Believe it or not, Docker was not a thing either, so you can just say, oh, you know, just create a Docker image in PHP and uh, tell Google to run that. Uh, <laughs> your only option, if you wanted to deploy to the cloud, or one of the few options, uh, was appends in there. And I think even the uh, JavaScript support wasn't that strong. Was it Python that it, maybe Java? Maybe Java was the good support? Anyway, I digress. Uh, the thing uh, is that today they do support uh, JavaScript Quite a lot, they say, but I haven't tried it out in uh, real life. I've uh, used Google Cloud in uh, companies later on to deploy JavaScript, but again, it was like with Docker, their Kubernetes, Google uh, Kubernetes engine, that type of thing. So not their app engine environment, which does have quite a few things like rollbacks uh, that I am interested in. Uh, again, with the, the solution of just creating this VeltKit app and uh, serving it with the node adapter and hosting that node server somewhere. I don't know if I were to do it with App Engine, for example, if I would get as easily the preview deployments, which I really like with Vercel. I like how easy it is to create different branches and have like a beta deployment or something, A-B testing and uh, preview deployments. Every time you raise a PR, you get the preview link almost instantly. There is definitely a way to do it with uh, App Engine as well and with any service. That's how Vercel is doing it, <laughs> after all. Uh, they work with other tools to make that type of thing uh, possible. But I think it may be a bit of a hassle and I'm not willing to give up the very easy preview deployments just uh, to have uh, the service in uh, the same uh, repo. And uh, another question from uh, Brian in this uh, chat break. Uh, when would I recommend App Engine instead of Firebase functions? Uh, so serverless is definitely a bigger trend uh, nowadays. Serverless is much bigger. I think serverless would get you far, uh, farther in your CV. You'd, get, you'd end up in more situations where you'll be writing something more like a Firebase function than uh, Google App Engine, because I do think most companies uh, do go with AWS services uh, as well, Amazon Web Services services. Anyway, uh, so not Google App Engine. As big as they are, as Google Cloud is, Amazon is still bigger in that space. So it's not like you'll have in your CV, oh, I have this Google App Engine app, and then people will be uh, super excited. Uh, but it is likely that uh, there will be some serverless uh, lambdas that uh, they need to deploy maybe in AWS. Uh, and uh, as far as why would you go with App Engine versus like a serverless function, like uh, Firebase functions, something like that. It's the, if you want something, if it's something lightweight that you'd want to serve on demand, uh, which is usually the case nowadays, we want smaller services, I would go with Firebase functions and that type of uh, solution. If you want something, a server that would always be on, maybe something that runs like a cron or a background service, or this case where you are downloading or you are using some hefty libraries that would get you over the limit of a Firebase function or where it wouldn't be economical to run a Firebase function. So I guess nowadays I would say <laughs> go with Firebase functions or similar if your uh, uh, business logic, the problem, uh, the thing you're trying to run is lightweight enough uh, or not expensive enough, cheap enough. 
So that's where I would do the math. I'd default to Firebase function. Then if I find oh, we're over the limit, then uh, I would uh, seek out Appenzin. Or if I find this Firebase function, is uh, the Firebase stack is costing me thousands of pounds. It's costing the company quite a lot of myself, uh, quite a lot. Then uh, I would uh, see about having something like Appenzin, which would end uh, up being cheaper. There are other things as well. Uh, sometimes, well, the startup type, the startup time of functions can be slower. But again, with happens in how do you keep it warm? That may be more expensive as well. So uh, no silver bullet. <laughs> I think what I've learned over the years is that uh, the answer is always it depends. Uh, but again, I would default to the lightweight Firebase functions or similar functionality unless I literally uh, cannot uh, put it in there or I find out next month that it's costing too much uh, to do. Uh, it's more flexible to change things there. It's uh, usually nicer to keep things uh, compartmentalized. And uh, as we may find out today, making things up happens in maybe trickier. Uh, all right, Google Timer. Or noodle timer even for 25 more minutes where hopefully we'll be able to have a fastify server running because as far as they say it here looks <laughs> easy enough so in the terminal run this and all they want us to do is require it I swear I remember fastify injecting like the apps and the controllers in a different way but I guess that's their hello world solution so maybe that's all you need so import fastify from fastify And uh, then we can declare a route. Let me slide this up a bit further. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Is it not the default export? Was it what uh, would this be? Aha. All right, let's copy all of this instead. So not this. Not this toggle either, but somehow we got on fastify. I don't know what they're using this for. But this is the server. And uh, let's just get this. We can extract this to a different file shortly. Or maybe even now. Hmm, I was hoping this would tell me extract to, to file. Ah, there we go. Some unnecessary nesting for now. I just like to see it. Don't want to do this. And uh, we want this to be screenshot handler. Did we export this? Suit.
And uh, the options here, hmm. ah, that's uh, about creating like a schema, but uh, it won't have any properties that uh, it will be getting. We won't be returning an object. So for now, no schemas. So we'll do it at some point. And the uh, server start, I think we should get this from uh, the environment. So if I go to Google App Engine, there is a trust proxy option that uh, we should also pass at some point. And uh, the port we get from process env. And uh, so even here we can say And we can namespace this to something uh, more fun. Uh, let's do 3100, just for the fun of it. Oh, interesting. This claims that uh, this is not a promise. Hmm. And what's it doing with this port variable? I guess we knew that afterwards. What are they claiming here? Server listen, this does nothing. Ah, if it doesn't have the callback, then it's a promise, which makes sense. But it doesn't have the callback. So what's your problem? Hmm. So it should be resolving to this because it has the options, first if I list an options, and it should be returning a string, so you can await it, but it thinks it's, uh, I guess, this, or this. Interesting. I'll try to help them. That's why we love TypeScript for uh, <laughs> the type's uh, craziness. All right, so that port guaranteed to be a number. We've hinted uh, that uh, the options should be this, and now it can figure out more easily that uh, this is, because that's like uh, overridden type, a super type, I don't remember what, uh, overload, of course. So the listen method has quite a few overloads, quite a few ways that uh, you can call it with, and depending on how you call it, then you may get a promise back or not. So if you pass the callback as the second parameter, for example, you don't get something back because if you're passing callbacks, you're not uh, doing uh, a single await. Most likely, you shouldn't mix those things up too much. Uh, so now, from all the overloads, because we said that uh, it's this one parameter, which is options, which is uh, this, then I guess it can figure out that uh, it is a promise, so you can await it. 
Uh, we don't want to do that. And uh, in the screenshot uh, handler, these things we're doing before, but a handler, like this thing, uh, how do you return uh, an image? Want to add some uh, header variables and uh, all of that. So let's try return image. Do you return a response? What do you do? It's like super old. The reply, I wonder if this is uh, current. Ah, here it is. Do they still have this API? Yeah, so. Don't really want this. I guess in this example they know what the handler will have because they're passing it here, but we should type it. So it's a route handler. It's also a route handler method, I guess. What is that? Does it really get this first? Hmm. It's the difference between route handler method and route handler. Route handler method is what it says here. So let's do this. We're doing all of this because here we have right. So I don't know what uh, this would have been. It's not response. It's request reply. Sure. And I would love to be able to see in their API doing stuff with the reply. So we saw in that Stack Overflow thingy, uh, reply type image PNG, which is what we want. And then they just send the stream. So maybe that's it. We don't need to think about it <laughs> much. Just do that. Right, so don't export anything. Then the start method. What else do they do? It's just called start, I guess, in the end. Fair enough. All right, so let's uh, run this. Server should be listening somewhere, localhost, maybe not. Oh, 
cool. <laughs> I guess we should have uh, hit it. Uh, they do something with the address here. And uh, it's a good idea. So we can know. Hmm. It's, uh, not quite human readable. But uh, I guess we can hit this at localhost 3100, which should make Puppeteer run and eventually get us an image. Ta-da! All right, exciting. Uh, what we need to do is remove headless mode. This is huge. Still, I guess not that huge, like half a megabyte. The browsers are the ones that are super big. So Chromium is the thing that's very, very big. Okay, so we don't need that, we don't need that anymore. Right again. Didn't I tell you to do it serverless? I did, but uh, we didn't restart the server, which is why we may want to bring in Nodemon instead of TS Node. So our changes will restart the server. So now we should see the same thing, but uh, with uh, Puppeteer running behind the scenes in the headless mode. Exciting. Uh, let's look at the agenda here and do the break. And uh, we're right around here. I guess we set up the GitHub before, but uh, this is the part that uh, I want to go next. So be able to capture which URL, I suppose, you want us to hit for you. Our service would be hidden. Uh, that's the thing to do next, and we are at one hour in already. Oh, time flies when you're having fun. So I want to do dynamic request parameters this time. And uh, all you'll be telling uh, this service would be hit this URL. I guess if you make this into a real uh, SaaS, we can uh, add fun options. You can even have like a designer thing, so you don't have to create the thing we created in the SvelteKit app where we have uh, a nice custom uh, preview image there, but you have an editor and then you say, all right, this is going to be the format of uh, your preview image and uh, you just need to pass us some parameters, I guess, or title, subtitle. You can drag and drop things. We pretty much create Figma <laughs> in uh, this app. You can uh, over-engineer it as much as uh, you want. Provide the users an interface based on some templates on what they want their social preview images uh, to be. And we also uh, render the HTML for that and then run our puppeteer. Uh, but that's by the by, no more feature creep. Uh, for now, let's just say that uh, I just want you to tell me what's the HTTP, what's the URL you want me to hit. So here I'm just saying that the image URL is this, hard-coded. And uh, the question is, how do I get uh, request parameters here? Usually something like this. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure if we would do it like that. Uh, I'm not really sure what the API would be. So is it just in the root of the service, you hit it with some uh, parameters and uh, that's it? Maybe. Uh, because your URL will likely have slashes as well, I don't think we'd want to do it like that. How would we namespace it? It's the browser sort. Would we... Let's not overthinking. Overthinking. Overthink it. Uh, oh, they have the, the magic thingy. Yeah. 
URL data. I love command uh, K opening up this uh, toolbar. And a uh, ah, fun comment from uh, Bruce that uh, when you've made a deploy, then uh, Vercel will uh, give you this nice screenshot uh, to show what you've actually deployed. And uh, I don't know what they're doing behind the scenes to get this screenshot, but it's likely they're using Puppeteer or Playwright or uh, something to hit the app and uh, generate this. Uh, definitely an inspiration. The biggest inspiration, I'll just uh, do this uh, quick, uh, quick slide, uh, was GitHub, really. Because you can see how it generates this magical uh, dynamic uh, screenshot uh, as well, which I can only imagine they do it with uh, screenshot and, and not by creating the image uh, on uh, the back end. Because especially this breakdown with uh, the bars, it may se seem simple, but I don't know, maybe I can only think in UI frameworks uh, nowadays. I just uh, think it would be so hard to do with like a custom font and that sort of thing, backend only. I can only imagine they're doing some sort of uh, puppeteer trickery to get that to work. Uh, right, but I digress. What I'm trying to find is how do I get this to take a URL parameter. So if this takes URL equals uh, what did we do before? I can find it here. Instead of hard coding this, I want this to work. And my question is, is this part of the request? Just have like URL. I guess, uh, but what is this? It's a string, it's just a string, oh no. <laughs> Nowadays, it should be something that has uh, URL params as well. Uh, right, so. On this right so search params URL. get URL uh, how do we throw errors it's a good question. Fastify, fastify. Too many tabs. <laughs> Stack Overflow, you can see I still get notifications about uh, PHP things I've answered 10 years ago. Uh, but yeah, errors. So we don't want this <laughs> all or nothing approach. Oof, JSON schema. But I wonder what we can uh, do here. Maybe something for uh, another stream I can only imagine. Uh, because we want to say that the URL you hit us with will have some URL search params. And uh, what I want to do is return like a status 400, right? And, uh, hmm, interesting. So 
this looks like I can just do a 400. And I guess this is something like you can specify your own custom status codes, like more human readable, and then your custom uh, error handler will get it, I suppose. Uh, but uh, what we actually want Can this ever be? So it can be null, which is fine. So if this is not a string, I guess it can be an array or a number, which is something that happens with Svelkit. So we can just check for truthiness. It's not truthy. If it doesn't start with uh, HTTP, then I can uh, send uh, that status code. And that may be it for now. Uh, but it was a TypeScript thing. It was not. If this is not a string or it doesn't start with this, how can you not know that uh, this is not null anymore? Ah, we haven't returned, so TypeScript is correct. TypeScript is correct once again. Still gets it like this. So if we don't give it any much URL, uh, then it should blow up. See, return a 400, not quite blow up. If not, it should go to that URL we told them. So let's go there. Great. Uh, to prove that it's dynamic now, it's the light count to 77. Uh, none of this works. I'm so used to like hot reloading, restarting servers that I keep forgetting uh, that uh, we need to do this. Great. Uh, so all of this is because this is crazy. Hello. Is it a SNAS? 500 it says. Ah, invalid, this is blowing up. Ooh. Uh, what is this again? We're doing all of that and I forgot how we started here. So, restart this. I think setting up node moon should be the next thing we do. Uh, just slash. All right, interesting. Uh, so, how do I get justify URL search params? Search. That's not what we want. Free. Oh, interesting. So, on the schema, we can specify a query string. Ooh, and I bet that uh, we can even I bet we can even make this even better with the fastify and have that guard against is it an actual URL? Uh, but for now, just making it a string should be fine. But how do I get the query string? Who knows? And uh, let's look at their initial example. Uh, 
docs. So they were passing the schema when we looked at the TypeScript section. And they were using it here in the options. Right. And so our handler, this. Product options, so all of that. And we can, ooh. <laughs> How would we be doing that? That's quite uh, interesting. How can we create a handler? There must be a better way to create a handler there. Would we have a file that has the handler and the route options? That seems a bit uh, silly. Uh, and yet, best I can think of, I guess, for now. Can always refactor afterwards. And uh, what we actually want the schema to be is the query string thingy that we found. And the type is not object, it's like much buffer. So type. say type buffer and that's it maybe not let's just do this but the url param will be a string great and maybe there are more guards we can add there but how do we get it it's gonna be just query string Default is this. Is it just in the request? Is it this? I am remembering to restart this. Which is awesome. Uh, but uh, let's see if we actually get anywhere. Sorry for the fast clicking. Invalid URL. Great. Ah. What was I still doing with the query string Christmas? Don't want this. Uh, what will this have? What is this supposed to be? Hmm, I guess at some point I would be able to type this somehow. This takes raw server, raw request. <laughs> I imagine some of these would uh, allow me to type what the, something based on the schema. I'm wondering, am I making this harder for myself? Would this better understand what it's getting? It, I can see fastify schema and all of that, so I'm not sure if it would know what this does. In any case, I will want to like override the uh, script there. All 
either quest cree should be something that will be validated but there must be something in this generic that uh, we can say that actually this is going to be defined but we'll figure it out afterwards And we'll get this from here, use it here, just ignore for now. Restart the server. Huh. Interesting. Ah, it is cutting. <laughs> of course, it is uh, breaking this up there. So we'll need to figure out how to parse to not escape a URL like this. Don't really know. But we should get an image there. It's not going to be quite correct. So we haven't captured the title and the subtitle. Uh, so how do we escape URL escape uh, slash? If you were using our API, you would be creating the URL using the URL search params uh, thingy. So you wouldn't have to add the escaped uh, characters. It'd be setting this. You'll have this object, the URL search params object, and you'd be calling the set method here. And then even if it has slashes and all of that, it would be immediately escaped. Uh, so I guess maybe that's what we should try. <laughs> Here. Search params. We want the URL to be our huge HTTP thingy, this. Is there a string method? So there you go, everything escaped nicely. So now, I can paste this in, and I expect We'll get the title and subtitle. All right, so this mostly works. Well, definitely works, but we need to convince uh, TypeScript that uh, we know that uh, this is going to have a URL thingy. Uh, if not, then we should go out. So we have this schema, right? We're saying to fastify respond to this request to this URL with this handler and uh, the query parameters are going to have a URL that's going to be a string which I'm sure you'll be able to type even harder and do our validation for whether it starts with HTTP there but for now how do we say that this route handler method is using the schema uh, row server row request <laughs> schema compiler what is this uh, because that looks promising. Will I be looking at TypeScript versions for everything? Maybe we need this, but I guess we don't. Oof, interesting. So in the get method, you can pass the query string there. It's all well and good. But how can I pass it to this? It's just doomed. inline this method 
Like how, how do I get the type of this method? Is the recommended way just don't do that and always use uh, uh, server get or app post or whatever? Ooh. Even here it's doing it like this and uh, passing an anonymous method. I guess that could be the way we do it. Uh, right, so one way to do this instead of having a screenshot handler or something, maybe we have like a routes directory. And then we have home.ts, the index.ts, knows what it is. Ah, screenshot.ts. And in there, we can have a method that says setup route. And it takes the server, and the server is going to be Fastify instance. What is this thing? Fastify instance, great. That's what we need. Spring from here. And in there, we can say that we're doing this, uh, but we're stealing the route options from here. And uh, we are inlining this method. For the screenshot route. So instead of doing this, we just paste it in. And we can import puppeteer like we do here. And the question is if I don't DS ignore it, what do we do? Yeah, still upset. So why is that? So we saw that here we can say query string. How, how were they doing it? Query string. They've created this interface. I guess we're kind of re-typing this, but there must be a better way to do this, but let's just get this working. All right, so suddenly it knows that this exists. So maybe we don't need to do anything further. And we can restart the server and see it still works, hopefully. And sanity check what happens if we don't pass in the URL. So it works, great. If I didn't pass this, <laughs> okay, false. Uh, so it's falling here, it's failing here. <laughs> okay, false. <laughs> That's funny. So anything I put in here? I was expecting that uh, with the schema, then uh, there would be like another place where this fails. So we specify that we want the URL to exist. Is, it, is there like a required or something? Maybe. So 
So this works still. Does it? Ugh, I'm, uh, I have the wrong query string to do this. This works still if I forget the URL. Still okay, false. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, let's look at the query string docs again, just in case we find something that says how to specify that a query string is required. JSON schema seems like a maybe potentially better way to do this. So, would it be here? micro optimizing this much longer we will go to the Google App Engine stuff soon. Yeah, it doesn't seem to do much more. Oh that's being silly, I'm not using this screenshot handler. Silly me. Uh, I should be using this method, set up road. Do I need to await this? Guess not. Yeah, no, no, this is not like awaitable. So I want to set up the route. Instead of doing this. No, it errors. Interesting. So what have we done wrong here? What were we doing before? We're just doing server get blah blah blah. Now we're doing set up route with the server. But for some reason, this is not acceptable. Do I need to wait this? Much no. Imagine this mutates the server as well. So let's double check again. All we, re we were really doing before was the same thing, like no single weight or anything like that. And now we're just passing in the setup route part. Is it that our schema sucks and doesn't like it? So it makes it to set up the server, but something fails. And we're not even making it to catching this. Why? Valid schema or something? Alright, 
en väldigt skimma. Fair enough. Eh, object or boolean. So here I've got this thing, which I shouldn't have had. Now it's happy. Now we can try to hit this. Now we get this. Uh, we get to here, but uh, still, I would imagine there is a way to say that the query string URL is required somehow. Not something to get stuck on uh, today, or now at least. Uh, let's double check that our previous URL, this one, refresh. Hope this works still. Takes a while, but works. So we could be considered about casting, but I'd say that it's on the user of our service to cast this heavily. Not us. If they want to exhaust their tokens and keep doing this, then that's fair enough. But if they don't... Ooh! So what was the problem now? Uh, I'm in the this directory. I think we're doing the same thing. I think we're still here. do this before we send the response as well. Maybe that's taking a bit of time. We're getting there fast. And this time it responded. I guess sometimes uh, it can take a while. So what's the request timeout? Uh, Quest timeout could be here. Nope. Nope. <laughs> uh, where do we set it up? It's not in route options. Factory looks like something we may want to do. Is it here? So by default. Sixty seconds, five minutes. Would it actually stay alive for that long? I demand the answer is no, but hey. Yeah, I don't know if we can make that happen. Let's say request timeout two minutes in any case. And uh, can we... Why can't this? Put 
try finally this so we can do the close in here Close it after, no matter what. I think I'm in the right level there. Guess maybe it crashed earlier. Spelling mistake, what is it? All right, fair enough. Uh, right, I don't know if this will actually speed up the requests. But we're closing the browser after we've sent the response, which should be fine. Which should be better, even. Uh, don't want to console log this. I think we're ready to commit something and get to the exciting stuff, which is deploying it somewhere. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, let's go to the agenda, the face view. We've discussed this. We've set up some routing. We did dynamic uh, request uh, parameters. Uh, we've kind of set up a uh, GitHub. Uh, but. So we did this earlier, I suppose. And uh, we can discuss cloud deployment solutions now and try to do Google App Engine or something else. But paste it in the other solution, the railway, uh, to check out later. But, well-deserved coffee break, I'd say. You can tell how familiar I am with uh, some libraries when uh, I can chat more and uh, crack wise. While uh, I'm getting into stuff I don't really know, then I'm more silent. I'll try to be more entertaining in the future. I think I forgot to mention that uh, I released a video yesterday. Like a winning streak is starting again. It's been a while since the last video, but it's on uh, animations in Lotti, so super front end uh, heavy. We did a stream maybe a month ago on uh, Lotti after a user request. Uh, and uh, again, the streams are supposed to be more exploratory. Even if I kind of know what's going to happen, I don't really know what's uh, going to happen. And sometimes I have no idea what's going to happen. But in any case, I learn more from the stream. And sometimes I do think it's worth it to go back and do a very curated streamlined video. So I can point when someone asks me, what should I use for animations with uh, Svelte Or why would I use Lotti with Svelte when Svelte has its own animations, or what about uh, form actions or something like that. I think I can tie into those subjects a bit better with uh, videos without telling someone what's this stream that took an hour and a half. And a lot of it would be me trying things out and uh, Googling. Uh, so new video, animations with Lodi, Svelkit form actions also featuring quite heavily, even if I don't explain them too much. Uh, bind this as well the feature that uh, I've been using more and more I've been finding use cases for, uh, for is also heavily featured so even if you're not super interested in cool animations maybe it's worth uh, what I was trying to do a playwright video for quite a long time in these uh, four months but it's such a long video that I was feeling a bit burnt out and I thought that oh let's do a fun quick one with uh, Lori 
and uh, in the end that turned out <laughs> to be very fun but uh, also long it's uh, almost 18 minute uh, long video so not quite the five minute breather that uh, i was uh, hoping for so maybe i need like an even shorter one <laughs> for uh, the next subject before i go back to trying to wrangle playwright hey but that's by the by as uh, oh thank you bruce for uh, the lot animation video it seems like you appreciated it uh, i don't know if you've uh, watched it uh, already uh, but uh, I always say, if at least one person finds it uh, useful, then it's uh, worth it. So I'm uh, very happy to hear that. Very happy to hear thanks. And uh, as always, keep uh, telling me what uh, you'd like to see from me. And most of all, for the next big stream, next Friday, the marathon stream, what uh, you'd like us to build together. So. I'll uh, try to be a bit more prepared. I'll, I will I'll probably be using fewer uninvestigated uh, technologies there. Oh, so if we go with e-commerce, for example, I will look into more headless CRMs and have more current knowledge on what we'll probably use for the kind of backend side of uh, our store. And uh, I won't be doing a lot of uh, live Googling, but live Googling is part of uh, the job. That's why an extended stream where we can actually do this for like four hours or who knows how long it's going to get. Uh, I think we can uh, uh, get far with that. And uh, yeah, it's going to be news vault get up. It's going to be fun. Like my head is spinning with the possibilities and the potential. So do let me know uh, what exactly you'd like us to build. I think if this actually goes well, the deployment of this uh, goes well, uh, now, there is a non-zero chance that I will want to do a uh, uh, software as a service type of startup type of thing where this screenshot or browser shot uh, thing is a real thing you can sign up for. You have like a free tier, you have a premium tier of, you know, a thousand requests per however long you can buy yearly. I think there is a lot of things you can do, exciting things with Stripe subscriptions and that sort of thing that a uh, SaaS app uh, would... Uh, allow us to do that an e-commerce app wouldn't really allow us to do. An e-commerce app would have the traditional, of course, I've made this, uh, here's a Stripe payment link and uh, you can pay for it and that's it. But with SaaS, you can look into quite a few more things, even the campaign marketing, that sort of thing, recurring emails, how to get the user to the user delights. Those are all exciting, uh, super long subjects that we'll definitely not be able to, <laughs> to cover in just one stream. But it's just like an exciting start to do a long one. Uh, but yeah, try to navigate me to one app that you'd be ex excited to see me do because there's going to be the long stream and then we'll follow up for a while. It's not that's going to be a fire and forget type of thing. Uh, next up, deployment solutions. AWS is still the most popular one. Uh, and one of the most uh, affordable ones. I'm not even mentioning Azure, which should be mentioned for sure. Microsoft Stack is taking over everything. Azure is uh, used big in gaming and streaming and uh, that sort of thing as well. But still, uh, the ratio of the companies I've worked for that use Azure is low, even though I've worked with uh, companies that also use like C Sharp, SQL Server, like more of the Microsoft Stack. <laughs> Uh, still, Azure, I'd say, is a big one, like a big three, but uh, the last of the big three ones, even today. Correct me if uh, I'm wrong or correct me if uh, your experience is uh, different. I'd say second in popularity would be Google Cloud. I think maybe five years ago, they started really pushing heavily to the uh, cloud uh, services there. And uh, personally, I find it more pleasant to use than AWS that feels like <laughs> UI-wise, uh, is the same as it was uh, 10 years ago, but still has definitely expanded quite a lot. Quite a lot of uh, more features are in the Amazon cloud as well, the Amazon web services. And uh, that's the leader for sure. Most companies I see are using AWS. Uh, lots of companies are using AWS behind the scenes to sell their own thing as well. So that's always very helpful to know how to navigate uh, around and how to work with. And there are a few startups that are popping up like uh, Render or I imagine even uh, Railway that uh, are trying to be an alternative to the big three. 
and uh, with things like edge deployments, uh, hot keywords, uh, there is space for uh, new players for sure that uh, allow you with uh, little frustration to deploy your app in a way that is close to every user, for example, that sort of thing. Uh, Heroku has gone the other way, maybe now that they don't have a free tier anymore, where they're kind of closing the door to the tech enthusiast, but maybe not. I've used uh, Heroku quite a lot in the, the past, but not an option today, I'd say. Uh, as I said, maybe in that PHP shop was uh, the time that uh, I used Google App Engine the most. Google Cloud in general was in a JavaScript and then TypeScript uh, shop, uh, but I haven't used Google App Engine with Node, so I'd be excited to try that one for sure. So I think it may be a uh, let's just do it type of thing. Let me mark we're already 151 in Whew. and uh, see what we manage to do. Let's switch back to the desktop uh, and let's see what links did I have open. We did this. We have this repo that we've populated with a scaffold code and now I'm gonna have even more. Do I have another field here? Nope. Uh, let's commit all of this. may be worth noting that uh, we did go with uh, a Puppeteer again. We did try Playwright as well as uh, an alternative solution in the previous stream, but Vit was having some problems uh, building Puppeteer. I don't know why I tried a few different versions of uh, Puppeteer and Vit didn't like it. I think this uh, will have no problems with Puppeteer, but with uh, Playwright, but uh, we'll be going with uh, Puppeteer uh, anyway, because I do think Playwright is something when you want cross-browser support, the most they're very similar. A lot of the same people are behind both uh, libraries as well. Playwright is a bit newer, a bit cooler, but uh, I think it's leaning into the multi-browser support more heavily, while Puppeteer was initially only a Chromium and Chrome uh, type of thing and has the let's support Firefox and uh, other browsers as a second thing. Playwright has it as a first thing. Uh, None of this matters for us. I don't think we'd be providing our users options on uh, do you want to take the screenshot or Chrome or Safari or something like that. So I think going with Puppeteer is uh, fine. And also let's remove this handler actually. And I can omit amend with no edit and then push. Maybe add the agenda not manually restart the server like savages, we can do something like this. Uh, but for now, let's see if we can actually manage to deploy to Google App Engine. Uh, so, changes have been synced. We have this repository here that should have the thing for us to build. There are uh, a few other things that we may want to week. So apparently if we use the SWC compiler, it won't be doing the type checking live, which can only be good for us. <laughs> uh, and uh, I think in the TypeScript config, we can just pass the options for TS node, but I can't find the link. So this node. Nah. Uh, this node. 
in uh, TS config options. Here, fair enough. So just in this level, TS node, and then SWC true. And that should make server a bit faster. <laughs> it could also make the server straight up not work. Uh, ah, right. So there is a performance, I suppose, section here. Is it SWC? Just install these dependencies. That's what we need to do. Right, the server is starting, but I think this one won't be taking uh, type, so it will start regardless. So it's probably sensible to have a build step, even though we won't be building. Uh, which would actually be doing the typing. And uh, so for build, uh, how do we do the type check? This. So now, we build, then we have no problems. I imagine if we went uh, here or something and said port TypeScript knows that this is not a thing, but our server will start, but eventually crash. But if I build, it will highlight this error, so we can go back here. Cool. Uh, so... Let's say that the performance thing, who knows? Uh, enable SWC, the Rust, uh, Rust based compiler. Uh, build step with type checks. I've mentioned before that uh, something we could have also been doing uh, could have been an actual build step. So using node to run our server, not TS node, and have a step where we use the TypeScript compiler to compile the TypeScript to JavaScript. But uh, I like this approach and I don't remember the last time I used TS node in uh, production, so I wanted to give it a go. Uh, and we are doing it like this to make this node faster. Uh, so, on this, this we've deployed, this node we mentioned, Mastify we've used, here, uh, I do know that there is a GitHub action as well for deploying, and uh, maybe first we want to create a new project, and we want to call it browser shot. Seems happy. <laughs> no. It seems available. I 
I don't remember what uh, I was trying to do with uh, the with Svelte repo with Google App Engine. Uh, but right, we're here now. We may need to enable some billing. Enable Cloud Build API, it says. That's what we want. Enable this. Brilliant. <laughs> Didn't quite work. I wonder why. Let's try to get there a different way. Keep a credit card on hand for this. Maybe a current credit card, I suppose. to the agenda window in the meantime. Hopefully we won't be hammering this. If we were to turn this into a service, then uh, we'd need uh, something like API keys to cut API keys to give to people and then confirm that uh, they have an account with us, they have the correct API key and all of that. Two-factor verification for me. If we were to make this, we would need API keys in order for uh, malicious parties to not be able to just DDoS us or uh, consume our API without pain and that sort of thing. All right, so. Something has been added. And now, didn't I enable this? Guess not. Alright, it was just asking me to attach this specific project to the billing account I created before. Not too bad. So hopefully eventually this will stop spinning and will start working. And uh, then it's saying use the Google Cloud uh, CLI, Nathan, all of that. 
Uh, but there should be an action to do this by uh, GitHub. We may also want to create our uh, App Engine application at some point. Let's see if this has stopped spinning. Good. Uh, let's see if I can create the App Engine application. Great. We need to pick something. <laughs> Classic Europe one, so the big one that's closer to Spain. I like that they have the little pins nowadays. Anyway, like the, out of nostalgia, I will pick the London one. Interesting though, I would think that they'd have uh, some clever load, ba load balancing nowadays where I guess they can do the load balancing even if your server is only in uh, uh, this place. That's the advantage of uh, serverless. You can have your methods be closest to the user without having to commit and do too much like load balancing trickery and stuff. Uh, resources and all of that. Should I pick something here? So it's saying that I should download the Cloud SDK and uh, deploy using the command line using this, which I'd say is the easier way out, but uh, we will not do it like that. We will try to get a GitHub action somehow. So Help action, Google up and send. Is that it? <laughs> Oof, we will we'll need to create service accounts and uh, all of that uh, craziness, which I guess is not the end of the word. I thought that uh, we'd be creating app YAMLs and uh, that sort of thing, and then it would try to read everything from there, but uh, I guess not. Interesting. Workload identity provider. Seems very straightforward. All right, let's uh, try it with uh, this, uh, this way first. Just Python 3 by default, right? Whoa! No Python at all? This also reminds me with Volta, it want to pin version, not version to node 16. So that's great, we did that. So let's try to download this, just because it feels like it may be simpler.
maybe this would work. So let's uh, look at our terminal now. Uh, do we have uh, this? Right, looks like we do. Cool. Uh, so that's handy to keep in uh, some window. What do we do with the tools? Yes, we're on this. I wonder how much credential magic we need. I'm also wondering in which directory we may want to run this in. I wonder if this matters. I think at some point it will ask me to open something in the browser. Yeah, why not? Hmm. I wonder, do I need to restart the cell? I'll just start it just in case. Cool. Some gcloud action. Uh, so with this installed, I guess, I uh, would be able to deploy this. What I want to do, to cloud in it, sure. Yes, great. Login with this guy. The guy is me. Syndicated, cool. <laughs> Pick the latest one. Uh, we are authenticated with uh, Google Cloud. So if I find the proper window at some point, I guess we just did the, like the, we've written our web service already. We specified the start script. Ha, need an app YAML. Uh, so let's create that, I guess. <laughs> it's huge <laughs> uh, thingy. What a file. Uh, so apparently all we need is an app YAML, which some people spell without the A. And uh, I think the cloud uh, app deploy will just work. And uh, we'll find out soon enough. Be kind with uh, the URL until uh, we stop requests from anyone else other than uh, I or without an app key or something. I suppose it will tell us that it managed to deploy this thing there. And uh, then we should be able to hit that URL this URL and get a nice preview. So 
thing if we we do the search param streak again. making the CPI up. the hard count Oh no! What happened to my string? Just a bit from here, I guess. Right, all of this to see if this works. I guess all this will do is open it in a new window. This is the time where if I had the, the person to add the poll, uh, besides me, I would be adding the poll. Will this work? The answer is no, uh, which I didn't expect. Uh, did we not start the server? Did we not NPMI? What did it not do? Interesting. Did not install dependencies. I was expecting that we'd get the 400 uh, error here for uh, this. But that we'd still be able to hit this URL. And that this would work. But it doesn't, it gets a 500, and we don't know why. Uh, we can stream logs, that's cool. Let's try to do this. I would have expected that uh, if it couldn't start the server, it would have uh, told us that, uh, hey, couldn't start the server. Maybe the Playwright browser, the browser is not installed. The Puppeteer, the Chromium Puppeteer uses is not installed. That could be a thing. No log entries, sadly. I don't know where these go, but uh, they don't go there. Uh, my guess would be exactly that. So deploy, what does deploy do? It's my question. Does it know to npm install? They have gone through the instructions step by step. <laughs> NPM start, it says this. It 
it seems like if I have the up YAML, surely it would be npm starting and then it would be fine with it. Right? managed to deploy this, which is good. Uh, can I see... Let's live debug this. It's kind of fun. It's not loading anything. It's not. Uh, can I get into the source code? So it has these files. What can it tell me about thing then. I just want something to confirm that it ran uh, npm start. It should be starting the server. Wouldn't we be getting like a, a log or something? Who knows? Uh, what else do they do here? They do use this for port, which is good because I do believe we've done that. Oh! Cool! Logs! SWC problems. Could it be that uh, I specified not 16 too late? Maybe. Can always be the case. So just in case. Remove those two things. Install. I also saw a reference to the Git repository, so I'm wondering, did it not deploy, uh, deploy what we had locally? It's, I think it would, but who knows. I'm interested to see... So different packets lock, which is kinda promising. Uh, let's see if the server, server starts now. It does, but the packets lock is different. Which can be huge. So let's commit this. I hadn't committed this before because I was hoping that we'd be setting up the GitHub action thing and then jumping into uh, pushing this commit to trigger the run. Uh, right, so this starts if we want it. And uh, let's let's just deploy. Oh, sorry. Uh, let's confirm that uh, on localhost we can still hit this, even though we're using a different version. I think maybe locally I have a later version of Node. So there, when I try to run on Node 16, it didn't work. That's my hope. Seems like this still works. So let's deploy this again, I suppose. So cool things that are coming back to me is that you can you can have multiple services here. So you can have like your web service and your API service, uh, different uh, things in the same project. So it's probably an anti pattern to call the project browser.dash API <laughs> because 
browser, so it can be the huge umbrella that has the web app and the API and the cron job and whatever else. And then uh, you can namespace them using the service option. But hey. It's also of interest to me that uh, it uploads only two files, but uh, I guess the file upload is the first thing that happens. After this happens, then maybe it triggers the NPMI and NPM build and NPM start part. I don't know if it ever runs NPM build as well, which is a decent question. Uh, in logs, we've done data in the service. We're kind of doing it now. Uh, they are adding some code here. Just deploy again, and they can see different versions, which is very good for rollback if you need that. But yeah, I think we're close to the end of the stream, so hopefully we will end on a win. Uh, I would be interested in, interested to have a look offline on uh, setting up the GitHub action to deploy to App Engine, which doesn't seem too crazy, but uh, I imagine it will be all about going to the Google Cloud Console and creating service accounts and then pasting them in. This is the thing that uh, I am most curious and worry about. This may be the thing that takes time. This looks super fake, so I'm sure that I need to go somewhere and do something that may be boring to do if uh, I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, but yeah, in the end, you get the URL. You can do cool stuff with uh, the URL. You can even set up the action, I suppose, to do the deploy previews, which is what I was mentioning before, that it's not like you cannot do it with Google App Engine, but Vercel just makes it so easy. All right, deploy it again. Let's uh, see. Try to hit our service. See if we get anything better. Same thing. And uh, I wonder if we got fresh logs. The easiest thing to check would be to not do this, resulting in a slower service, but maybe a service that uh, actually works. So let's try that. Okay, so what we're gonna do, fix a build. I guess we can deploy this without committing the chains. So let's deploy again. This takes a while. <laughs> uh, sorry for that. So all it did is upload the TS config. So I can only imagine that it uh, does the npm uh, start thing. Uh, is it saying somewhere? I would be mentioning that in those logs would be getting the starting the server, spinning up the server message somewhere, but I cannot find it. And it seems that this runs when we're trying to do the get request and not when the server starts to load. It's kind of weird. I guess it kind of makes sense. Like the server must be starting, but then ETS node must be having trouble running through SWC. And trouble because it's a different environment. Don't really know why. But that me, my guess. That would be one less of a hassle and one uh, fewer worry if uh, we were using vanilla node and uh, just building, I suppose. Instead of TS node. Which maybe is a good idea to do. Uh, 
or I specify a node 16, which is fine. Another question is we are pointing the correct thing. Indeed, we do. If this doesn't work, then uh, next part would be try to just use node for this. Compile as a step in a this directory. Same thing. So we got this, which is cool. Don't know why it's not 8080, but got this. And I imagine at uh, some point the server starts, but what's the problem? Is it every time we try to do a request, it spins up the server? That's not exactly what we want, but maybe because it crashes, it retries, I suppose. And uh, what would the problem be? We're trying to cut an error here. Uh, are we having errors anywhere else? So the puppeteer stuff, once again, uh, is not quite working for us. And uh, I wonder why. It's just gonna take too long to debug. Uh, deploy this. Yes. Uh, I am thinking that uh, maybe, I think puppeteer uh, sips with uh, the Chromium browser inside it. So that shouldn't be a problem if you don't specify the extension path. I don't think you need a step to install the browser, but maybe you do, maybe that's uh, the problem. So let's search. There, couple happens in, here we go. Even in cloud functions. Simply do this. Simply do this. I don't like this. <laughs> type of language for sure. So yeah, this claims that it would just still work. Could it be that we're listening to this dev dependency? all of these not be the, the dev dependencies it's a good sound by the way
Petir was there though, so I don't think that's going to be that much of a problem. Latest version 19. When did this happen? <laughs> did this happen as we were streaming? That'd be quite funny. We saw someone streaming about this and we released a new version that makes it work and Google appends it again. We had a bug. So yeah, this request crashes the server and then the server restarts. I'm hoping it's not just that we're taking too long. Mm -hmm. Not quite. Failed to launch the browser, which is, great, uh, which is fair enough. Blah, 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 too much, blah, blah, blah. So I'm thinking that maybe we can uh, try to use the lightweight Chromium version that I used on uh, the other stream in the end. This one. So let's try. View this file. Copy this. Install this. And go to our screenshot setup thingy. Import this. First of all, let's see if this still works for us. So listen in here. On localhost, does this still work? Hopefully it does. It does weird me out that uh, it takes uh, a while. Uh, is it like 30 seconds? No. I don't know how long this takes to hang out, to hang up. All right, this still works. So let's try to deploy this and hope for the best. All the cloud platforms have uh, troubles with this. Maybe uh, a Docker container makes most sense now that I think about it. So Google Cloud Run would be the equivalent that I think the kids are using nowadays where we create our Docker file that has definitely Chromium installed in there uh, and has our uh, app as well. And uh, we tell Google Cloud Run, this is the image that we want. And uh, we definitely do know that there is an acceptable that's uh, a Chromium 
executable that can be run. And uh, if it works on my machine, on the Docker container, it will work on uh, the deployment and uh, we'll get no such uh, surprises. Uh, but Appends in, I think, does mo more things for you regarding scaling that uh, may make it simpler, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe next up we'll be doing uh, Google Cloud Run. But it's definitely been a uh, time flies uh, stream uh, here and uh, I'm excited about uh, next week because it will be a lot of work uh, to be done and uh, I'll need to figure out uh, something about uh, taking breaks more uh, consistently so we can keep going for uh, longer. I think this will be the last attempt for uh, today and I'll have to keep you posted on what happened ne uh, next, which would be a bit sad. <laughs> I would love to end on a win and I wouldn't want two streams in a row to be like, oh, we created this service that uh, does work locally, but then we try to deploy it and it doesn't actually work. Uh, but I do promise I'll keep going and keep updating until uh, we make it work. It's just that uh, I don't want people to be hanging around for like two hours until I figure this out. If it was guaranteed two hours, that'd be fine. It's just that we don't know. So let's see. We get anything different here. That is different. That is something. Uh, but it's not an image. I'm also wondering, if I don't hit it with the URL, do I get the you need a URL response? The answer is no. Hmm. Interesting. So how come this does not return the response that we expected? Did that just redirect to HTTP? Pretty weird, isn't it? I'd expect this to return the response was not okay. Ah. Is it not running in payment install? Guess so. How do I tell it to npm install? Because that's what it feels like. Maybe a quick thing as we Check this out. It's brought in TS node, so I get it must be doing npm install, surely. But who knows? And I would love to have this doing work as we're checking things out. So we got a different error and uh, the thing is if you cannot read this which I wouldn't blame you. It's could not find expected browser Chrome locally. Run npm install. <laughs> Download the correct reason. This could be a problem with uh, the library we got. So yeah, instead of this craziness I may try out if it's fast enough 
think this may be a problem with the with this that maybe wasn't updated <laughs> to run with the latest version of Puppeteer because that just happened, right? So let's see. Uh, we were looking at TechCat and this. I just want to see what's the version of Puppeteer that we had. 18.2.1. So it was definitely working. It's probably working with uh, this version. So let's try this again. That will be the last uh, check. So we'll do this check now, which just did an npm install to run the server, which didn't quite work. Fair enough. Uh, and uh, we'll deploy again one last time with the downgraded uh, puppeteer which may accept this uh, lightweight Chromium because Puppeteer does want explicit versions of uh, Chromium and it can be quite particular about the one to run with. So if this package does not provide the one that it wants to run with, it will crash. So my very <laughs> optimistic Odysseus not well thought out upgrade to this just before uh, because I, I saw a bigger number uh, was in hindsight not the correct move but hey one last thing to check you can always tell if a problem is uh, tough because my hair takes a uh, hit it becomes like more and more uh, fluffy unarranged wild In service, what else have we talked about? Ah, if we did manage to deploy this, we would be going to TechiCat to actually hit it from there and see if we can get the social preview images to work, which would be hot for sure. And speaking of hot, uh, doing Nodmon for the local development would be cool. But uh, yeah, next steps would mostly be, we will be taking a break from doing these things because next week we have a brand new app to build and ship. If I haven't figured this out, it's unlikely I'll be selling this as a service if I can't uh, even do this uh, example one. But if not, if, if I have, that's on the cards for sure. The main thing is that uh, I do not want to create apps that are just mock-ups and uh, you know, placeholders. So if we do do e-commerce, I'll need to find things in the house that uh, <laughs> I'll be able to legitimately sell, even if no one is actually going to buy them. I want them to have realistic applications. I guess I could go, if I were uh, in London at the moment, I would be going to the local coffee shops and saying, hey, do you want a website to sell your locally sourced co coffee? I'm sure. And most of them would have one, so they wouldn't need me. But maybe one would be game to create something like that. But yeah, build for uh, friends and build for people, not for demo projects, is uh, uh, great advice as well to follow. It will increase your skills even more and have a better look when it's put in uh, your CV. Increase your skills more because then you're working with another real person that uh, you'll need to understand, communicate well with, and maybe push you in different directions that you'd be going by yourself. And in your CV, of course, like the engineers uh, aren't as impressed with, uh, oh, I made this app for myself. Sadly, they should be, but they aren't. But if you tell them I made this coffee shop website, they'd be like, oh, cool, actual job experience. All right, here we go. And this should just be like quickly erroring. Because we don't have the URL, which is also weird, isn't it? And now that we have the URL, it should be attempting to get the screenshot. But in either case, not quite happy. If 
failed to run the browser process. I don't know what it's going to be with uh, the file system, but suddenly we have the same problem again. Maybe Docker will be the next solution that we try, but hey. Uh, do I dare do another quick uh, Google? February 2024, closed issue. It's like we've done it, like it's closed and closed again. Even Google Cloud Run here, which is uh, interesting. This person says that these options are fine. I wonder if uh, our thing is passing these options. This uh, library we brought in is passing some arguments here which claims is the additional list of Chromium flags for serverless environments here. So this should be helping, but I wonder if they're literally these. But yeah, I'm afraid, I don't know. Using Playwright would be a thing as well uh, to try. Playwright Google opens in. Of course, that would be fun to do. We also had the other problem as well with the SWC compiler, but I want to get to the bottom there. So does this person claim that you can just install this and everything goes fine? Maybe. So last thing we'll try. Ah, I think they have like a Chromium built in there. Returns browser. Nope. Uh, so, <laughs> one last one, let's try. With the uh, net, with the uh, puppeteer. The output here should be the same. It is the same. And our de deploy problems should be different, if any. And uh, I know I've been slack with uh, putting in timestamps at this point, but here, like almost three hours in, uh, but I guess the actual work we did was up to here, which is almost two hours, that's quite a lot to be honest, and then one hour spent debugging. That's the worst time to spend, because even if it's, well, worst for the employer, I suppose, for me, it's uh, all fun. It's, uh, you spend time learning, you spend time debugging, but nothing's quite clear, you're just navigating through things, and then you have nothing to show for it, nothing concrete, you can say, ah, oh, now I have this. So, not the best if you're working for someone else. If you're just uh, doing it for uh, your own benefit for learning, then you've definitely learned and I've definitely learned a few things here. Maybe a two-person stream, a co-host, co-person 
would also be fun. So if I get stuck into problems, or if they get stuck into problems, the other person could be doing the bands and the chat support. quite interesting that the Playwright API is very similar, but not exactly the same as the Puppeteer one. I'm sure quite a few times in uh, this stream I've uh, used them interchangeably as well. I've said the uh, Puppeteer when I meant Playwright and the other way around. They both start with P as well and they are, I suppose, theater related. Playwright is definitely theater related but puppeteer is like puppet theater is like subset subculture don't really know it does feel longer to update the service this time i wonder if it's a what spot never boils type of situation or whether installing playwright is doing more things doing more things feels like it could be better for us This troubleshooting page may be promising as well. You can run. <laughs> In App Engine Standard, don't worry about it. You can run it. Simply list it as a dependency deploy and that's it you never have to worry about anything all lies wonder if we're getting a different deployment as well uh, all right so slightly different Yeah, I can't find this Chromium thingy. Which is fair enough. Hmm. <laughs> one last, one last thing. So now I want to add like a post install script that uh, installs uh, Playwright browsers. Uh, but maybe I want to take inspiration from uh, the GitHub action for Playwright. This installs it with depths, I guess. Then they're gonna install the browser dependencies and uh, all of that. There must be a way to tell it Chromium, I guess, too late now. Let me install this one. been the thing we want to do we're almost there uh, but we still don't know if it's actually gonna manage to run it at least this is like a more usable error can't find the browser you haven't installed it it's fine love playwriting <laughs> try this <So. laughs> that's how they keep you in the stream they keep you hooked they're like ah oh, this uh, there is a little lead if you just keep this, keep up to this, then you'll succeed. All 
Ah. Cool. I guess that's proof that it is running npm install. And we could try to do the same thing with uh, the Chromium library we've installed then. I can only imagine it will fail the same way. But uh, this part... This library. This library has a playwright example. could try to do that, but I think we will call it a day because we've done enough. I imagine this will get the same error that it couldn't install the browsers because I can't see. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and passing in this library, I guess we can try it. I guess we can try it. Bring in this. Then lunch, but have the exit Q double path be this, and the arguments be this. not run anything post install. That will be our last hurrah for real. And that's gonna be it. I think I don't <laughs> they start doing the outro from now. Uh, super excited with uh, the stream next week. As uh, I've said many times there will be more of a plan so I know that we'll get visual things out that you'll be able to click around afterwards, visit yourself. I think we'll uh, do quite a lot next week and still have tons of subject to cover in following weeks as well, especially if we go with things like e-commerce, then it'd be using a headless CRM tools. I can only imagine that we wouldn't be able to cover that much in that week. Or if we did the SaaS one, then Stripe subscriptions those are things we can home in on but many many things we can uh, drill into and it would be exciting to try from scratch i think i would be using this velkit wizard to create a brand new app from there even though usually i would use my latest app that i've created and uh, updated to get uh, a better start but for learning purposes i think it would be cool to start like this and uh, see what's changed in the velkit since I created uh, an updated tech cut uh, as well. And uh, yeah, by Thursday, I think I'll have settled and uh, update the Discord on this is what we'll be building tomorrow and have the agenda of what I expect we'll be doing, how much ground we expect to cover the next day. Should be super fun. In the meantime, <laughs> you could have watched uh, three times the Lottie Animations video, create your own animation as well. Give it a watch though, uh, I did enjoy making it and uh, finally uploading it uh, yesterday, great relief. Until then, maybe if I'm gonna do a small one, it would be on meta tags and images, but uh, <laughs> clearly I will be focusing it on static images. It would be a whole different chapter to do it with uh, dynamic images because there is a lot of cover, a lot of warnings to say. All right. Final refresh. Crossing our toes, fingers, everything.
yeah, it is an expected fail, uh, but will we get like a different error? Because with it says the same thing that it can't find the executable, which is unfortunate. I would have expected a different error this time. And the other weird thing with uh, Fastify is that uh, this doesn't get us to the... You haven't specified the URL error. Maybe if we just curl it, that's what we'd be getting. But it should be just a JSON that says, okay, false, right? Oh, well. Uh, but yeah, back to the agenda. Unfortunately, we tried to deploy to Google App Engine. We did, but Playwright wasn't working yet again, which is very similar, but uh, slightly different uh, technical details error from uh, the one uh, we had with uh, Vercel. So with Vercel, the handler wouldn't deploy at all because it would be longer, uh, bigger than uh, the limit of 50 megabytes. Now, it does deploy, but there's something funky with uh, being able to run the Chromium and I don't really know why, I will find out. Stay tuned. Uh, if it were running, we would hit it with TechCat. You could have tried it with your own app as well, but we didn't get there. Nodemon, I realized during the stream that uh, it's very handy to have. Nodemon is a tool that you can use that auto restarts your server in development. It's not performant, so you shouldn't use it uh, to run your uh, real app, but uh, it would be handy because you never want to be trying something locally and realize that you have made the change, but you just didn't restart the server. So I think essential to set this up. Maybe we should have done it in uh, this part. And uh, we did try Playwright just now uh, a couple of ways. Failed similarly with the Puppeteer solution, but couldn't quite crack it. But uh, that's gonna be it. Once again, comment on any video with your ideas of uh, what to cover in general and especially for uh, next Friday's long stream. Go to the Discord as well. I do reply to YouTube comments, I do read them, or at least those that YouTube does so to me. But the Discord may be easier to have a more back and forth uh, conversation and definitely more searchable. But with that, I will wish you a lovely Friday. Hope you had fun. I definitely had fun myself. Have a lovely Friday, have a lovely weekend, and I'll catch you all next week.